Hello, thank you for tuning in. I thought it might be interesting to do a video on the water phone, which is not a super common instrument, but um, if you should ever need one and you're located in a large enough city, then the chances are that somebody will own one and you might be able to borrow it or rent it from them. So this is a smaller water phone, but it certainly still does everything that we need it to do. Uh, the water phone was invented by an American artist and acoustic engineering enthusiast by the name of Richard Waters, which I suppose accounts for some of its name. Um, and, uh, but also it involves water sometimes, so sometimes we play it with water. Uh, he invented it sometime between 1968 and 1969. Uh, Mr. Waters was, um, he did his graduate work in California at the California College of the Arts. And here we have the water phone. Allegedly, he was inspired to develop the water phone because of a Tibetan drum um, that you would put a certain amount of water in the resonance chamber of in order to distort the resonance, so we're going to go over that. Uh, it, it has another close relative as well called the nail violin. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that, but it's uh, essentially a flat resonating chamber, like a, about as thick as a textbook and about that big around that has nails sticking out of it. That's one of the configurations anyway, and you would bow the nails. So the water phone when it is uh, played by striking it, it's uh, referred to as a freak, uh, sorry, a struck idiophone. And when it's played with bowing it, it's referred to as a friction idiophone. And an idiophone is of course, an instrument that uh, produces its sound, typically a metal instrument that produces its sound by virtue of the entire instrument resonating. So first we're gonna talk about um, striking it and bowing it. For this you'll need a bow. I'm gonna use a bass bow and I'm just gonna tighten it up and you'll probably need some rosin as well. So I've got some rosin here. It's not the greatest rosin, but I'm not a professional bass player, so I'm, uh, I'm using what's at my disposal. You can breathe on it a little bit and then just rub it down the hair of the bow. And there you have it. Now our bow is ready to go. So first we're gonna talk about playing it without water. Sometimes you'll actually be asked to put water in the water phone. Sometimes you'll be asked to not put water in the water phone by the composer who wrote the piece that you're going to play. Um, so in any case, you can strike the water phone on the bottom with a soft mallet, as long as you do it gently. And you can also strike the bronze rods with a shaft of a mallet. I'm just using a, a black rattan shaft here to do that. So that's one way that you can play it. Of course, another way that you can play it is with the bow. So we're going to talk about that. Find that you're going to get the, uh, you'll find that you'll get the loudest result out of the instrument when you bow it closest to the resonance chamber. Uh, and you'll also get the highest overtones as well when you do that. You'll get lower fundamental pitches and quieter sounds by bowing it further away from the resonance chamber. You'll want to press the bow against the rod um, that you want to play hard enough that it, you can feel it sticking, you can feel the, the uh, tree sap, the rosin grabbing on, but then pull back gently so that you're not actually dampening it by playing it, but you're pulling back and getting a nice smooth tone out of it. That's obviously a really low fundamental. If I do it further down on the same rod, then I get a higher pitch. I can get some really high pitches from the short ones. And I can also get multiple pitches by spinning the instrument around as I play it. So there's the water phone without water. The water phone with water, uh, we would just add a certain amount of water. Essentially the resonance chamber is empty. Um, this rod is also hollow and goes directly into the resonance chamber. It's not plugged off and that allows the instrument to resonate. It's just like an acoustic guitar where you have a box and you have a hole in it so that the sound can go in, bounce off all the walls, and then come out again. It's a very similar principle with this. So what I'm going to do is I've got a, a standard coffee cup here filled up about half to two thirds of the way. Coffee cup from the Banff Center, one of my favorite places to have studied and to have taught. And I'm just going to add some of the water into the instrument until I get it sounding the way I want it to sound. And even when I just strike it with my hand, you can hear how it distorts the resonance of the instrument. So now if I strike it, the 
after effect is that when I move the instruments around, the water changes which uh, surface areas of the resonance chamber it's dampening and affecting and therefore distorts the resonance sound. And then if I bow the water phone, then move it around a little bit. so that I'm getting a variety of different sounds out of it. Um, everything from super high shrill overtones to lower fundamental pitches. And uh, yeah, essentially I'm just trying to create ambient effects with it um, and playing the instrument relatively aleatorically, which is what you'll most often find uh, in a score in which you're being asked to play the instrument. And that's a little bit about the water phone. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.